Hi everybody, hope you're all well and staying safe. Now in this video, I have taken a photograph of my good friend Sophie and I've changed the background. And Sophie has got the most amazing curly hair and I'm doing that because, it, well you'll see, she's got a lot of it with little flyaway curls. So it's the ideal photograph to use to show you the technique. Now Photoshop's not foolproof and you'll see in the video that it does miss some of her hair out when I'm doing the sort of separation. And this is where we go in and we repaint the hair back in. Now in the description below, down there, you'll be able to see a link and follow the link and you'll be able to download the brushes that I use in the tutorial, so they're free. Now at the start of the video, I will give you some tips and techniques from one photographer to another and I'll give you an introduction to the brushes. Now, if you don't wanna watch that and you wanna jump straight to the tutorial, I'll put the timings up on the screen now and you can, by all means, just jump straight to the tutorial. Um, but I, why not watch the first part and you might learn something that you didn't know. So listen, enjoy the video, but above all, you stay safe and, uh, and I'll see you a little bit later on. Hello and welcome back. Now, if it's your first time joining me, thanks for joining me and it's very nice to meet you. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to remove or replace a background in a portrait, specifically one that's got a naughty hairstyle with stray hairs like Sophie has in this shot. Before I begin the tutorial, I just wanna impart some valuable information what you've got to remember is, right, Photoshop will do a great job, it'll do its best anyway to knock that background out, but you can help Photoshop to do that by shooting your models against a plain background. So if we look at this original shot, I photographed Sophie against this gray background. In fact, most of my portraits, I just use a plain background because I know at any given time, I can change that background to wherever I want it to be. So in the future, with your portraits, try and shoot against a plain background. Just makes things a lot easier. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've got portraits that I've got busy backgrounds. They're outdoors, they're in a city, they're in the countryside. Well, that's a whole different technique because the tool I'm gonna to use to extract the background or extract the subject, I should say, from the background in this shot doesn't particularly work great with a busy background. And we use a different technique for that. So that's for a whole new video. The other thing to consider is that if this was a full body shot, we use a completely different technique and we'd use the pen tool. Now, this video is not about that, but let me just show you a full body shot. Um, what I would do here is I'd use the pen tool to create a vector mask. Now, again, that's for a whole new video. But what that vector mask does is create a beautiful, smooth outline around your model. Now, the pen tool cannot draw around. Imagine trying to draw around that hair, you know, with a pen. It's, it's pretty impossible to do. So we, we'd do it half and half. So we'd use the pen tool to get all the hard edges and make them lovely. Well, we say hard edges, but I guess they are hard edges, but we, you know, it gives them a lovely smooth finish. But around the hair, we kind of avoid the hair with the pen tool, and then we'd use a technique similar to what I'm gonna show you today to put the hair in. So let's jump back to the portrait, and uh, I'll take you through a few other things that you need to consider. Now the tool we're gonna to use, I'll put it right out there, is this one here, which is the quick selection tool. And if I click on that, I can access up here the select subject option. And that will do a really great job of, um, trust me, of, of sort of grabbing Sophie. And um, then along with that, I will use the select and mask. Now we're gonna to come to that when the tutorial begins. But here are some things that you need to consider. Using the, the quick selection tool and the select and mask, let's have a look at how good that looked then. So what you can see now is the results of using the quick selection tool along with that select subject and select a mask. And you can see it's done an absolutely brilliant job, hasn't it? I think that's really, really good. But when you look closely, let's just zoom in up here, for instance, I can see that there's bits of missing hair. And if we look over here as well, there's parts of the image that basically, although 
that selection has, has done a wonderful job. It's missing parts of hair. Now, if I switch on the original, you can see where that what the hair should look like. However, as I say, it's not foolproof using the select subject and you need to correct these areas. Now, in your particular photograph that you're working on, that might not happen and your hair might not be as uh, unruly and <laughs> nauseous as uh, Sophie's hair. But the thing is, if the tool doesn't actually select those hairs, you have to go in then and use a paintbrush to paint them back in. So let's just zoom out, go back to the original image, and you can see, same thing, the hair is still missing. Now what I did was, I went in and I painted those bits of hair back in. Now, let me just switch the hair on. So if you carry on locking up this in this area just here, and I'll switch the hair on. And that looks great, doesn't it? It looks convincing. So let's zoom in and have a little look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this white layer on and you can see that's what I painted in. And you might think that looks awful, but it doesn't once it is combined with the original image. And uh, let's just switch off this white layer so you can see. And it looks convincing, doesn't it? If we go over to this side um, again, this bit didn't look right, did it before? That's what it looked like. And you can make I me mean, look how convincing these strands of hair look. And it's not that difficult to do. The only thing is, it is a bit time consuming. But, um, and, and I would hope that in your portrait, you don't have to paint the hair in. But um, I wanted to show you this extreme case. And then just to show you how easy it is really to paint that back in. And the good news is that the brushes that I'll be using to paint in those sorts of missing hair strands, I'm going to leave a little link in the description below. And you can um, download them and load them into your version of Photoshop. Now, as I say, you might not need them and hopefully they'll match the hairstyle that you're editing. But if nothing else, they'll give you a sort of ground in, in, in what we do with hair uh, and when we take a background you know, and replace it. At the end of this tutorial video, I'm also gonna put some extras in because let me just show you the original photograph then. This is the way Sophie came from the camera. And as, as you know, I've got the gray background in, but I also did some work on her face, some face sculpting. I closed the mouth over slightly. I changed the eye color uh, and a couple of other little things. I put some texture over the top. Now, if you watch the video to the end, I know some, some of you like to do that. You'll see all those little extras. And uh, if you just look at the mouth area, you'll see if nothing else, that just looks better, doesn't it? And I've sculpted a face in a little bit as well. Now that's all really easy to do. So if you watch the video to the end, you can see those bits. So let's jump straight in now to the tutorial part. So let's switch then to the image we're gonna work on, which is all ready for us to start taking that gray background out. So the first thing I would do is to make a duplicate copy of the background. Now that's just Command or Control J. So I've now got the original and this copy that I've made. Next thing to do would be to create an, a, a solid color adjustment layer. And the color to go for is white. So I'm just gonna click on there and accept that. And then that needs to be placed underneath the copy of the Sophie photograph. Now, as well as creating that color fill layer there, it's a good idea to bring in the background that you are eventually gonna use because you might not have to do as much hair replacement as what you think. It just depends what background you're putting in. So I'm just gonna quite simply drag this green background that I'm gonna use into the photograph. And, uh, and then I'm just gonna resize it. So we need it to fit exactly behind Sophie. Now you can't see her at the moment, obviously, because it's behind Sophie. Um, so if I just, turn Sophie off, there she is there. So now I've got this background that is gonna be used eventually behind Sophie and I've also got this white color fill and um, we can begin now to start making the extraction. The extraction, that sounds like a dentist, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean, we can select the subject and isolate it from the background. So to do that, make sure you've got your photograph, the copy that you've made, make sure you've got that layer selected and you can rename it if you want, but I won't bother in this case. And then simply 
locate this tool, which is the quick selection tool, the shortcut W. Click on it. Now, what you can do with the quick selection tool is it's basically a brush. Now with the square bracket keys, I can make the brush bigger or smaller. And I could drag over the image and keep doing that until I've got the subject selected. Now it's selected the background, hasn't it? Now if I press Alt or Option, it goes to a negative. Now it's so small inside that circle, maybe you can't see it, but it is going to a negative and I can do this type of thing. And um, while I've got my finger pressed on the Alt or Option, I can do that. However, I'm just gonna deselect that, which is Command or Control D. When with the tool selected, as I mentioned earlier, we've got this option to do Select Subject. So it's much easier in this case to just click on to there. And there you go. Photoshop has done the selection for me. Um, looking at what I can see at the moment, it's done a reasonable job, so I would accept that. And all I'd simply need to do is then just click on Select and Mask. So let's do that and see what happens. Now, because I put that background in, the green background, um, you can actually see that and you can see the, the sort of job that the tool has done and it's, it's quite rough at this point, but don't worry about that. So let's look at what we've got. As you can see, a new window's opened up with tools down this side and some tools down this left-hand side as well. So at the top here in the properties, we've got the view mode. Now I like to switch that onto white so I can now see the selection against the white background. Because I did put that green layer in, I can always switch to that and it gives you an idea of how well the selection is going. <laughs> um, I've got updates apparently, so I'll do that tomorrow. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it on a white background and you can also take the opacity down as well and um, so you can see what bits are missing but I'm just going to leave it there for now. Then we have an edge detection um, with smart radius. Now, I tend to put that on, say, around about, let's put it on to four and put smart radius on. Now, I can show the edge, basically. That's all I've done there. Photoshop's kind of knows that that's the edge of my selection and um, it knows that that's the key area, basically. And then we've got these global refinements, which we'll look at a little bit later, and then your output settings. On this left-hand side, we've still got access to the quick selection tool. So again, I can add or subtract, just like we did, I showed you earlier. So I could go over here, for instance, and press Alt or Option and say, well, I don't want that bit, etc., etc. So you can add and take away from the selection. In this case, I don't want to do that. But the real powerful one is this brush here, the Refine Edge Brush Tool. And it does an unbelievable job, which you're now gonna witness. So I'm gonna use the square bracket keys to make that a little bit bigger. And I wanna stay close to the edge of Sophie's hair as I click and drag. And let's see what happens. That's just one click and drag. And that is absolutely amazing, isn't it? And then I can go in and do the other side and just do exactly the same thing, just dragging very close to the edge. And it looks amazing, doesn't it? Now at this point, I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller and I'll just check certain areas. Just here, I can see some gray, so I can just go in there. Now it's taken some hair away as well, hasn't it? And I've gotta make the decision now whether I can put that back in or let's just have a little look. I'm just gonna dab there, that's a bit better, isn't it? We just dab rather than drag. Um, there's a bit of gray just here. And again, it's it's been a bit destructive there, hasn't it? So I'll just dab there, I think. And um, down there, perhaps. And there's a little bit there as well. And again, it's done a little bit too much damage. So you've gotta be careful about um, what you are willing to lose and what you're willing to put back in. So again, I'm just gonna try a, a little run down there. And that, that worked, didn't it? So it's trial and error and you can use your command or control Z to um, 
undo parts that you're not happy with, basically. But I think that's a reasonable extraction. Now, again, if I put this onto all layers and you can now see it against the green background, it doesn't look so bad, does it? So those little bits where it's perhaps missed or you can see around here, this area here, I know I'm gonna to have to go in and paint that in. And obviously over there, it's it's missed a bit as well. But on the whole, it's done a pretty good job, hasn't it? So the next thing I'd do is I apply a bit of smoothness and I don't know, maybe about six should do it. And then I always shift the edge in a little bit as well. So you can, sh you, you, you can, you can play around with this. I mean, obviously if I shift it in too much, it looks silly, doesn't it? But I like to just shift in, say minus three, and it'll just take any sort of halo effect off. Uh, I don't bother with feather, but by all means you can play with that. If I feather it, it's gonna do that. And I just don't like that. So I don't bother with the feather. Contrast tends to make the edges more harsh. Um, and in this case, because I used a big aperture, the sort of outside of the hairstyle is a little bit out of focus anyway. So I certainly wouldn't want to boost the sharpness or the contrast. So I would leave that. Um, lastly is the output. And I always have this selected, decontaminate colors 100%. Because what that means is, imagine if I had a photograph Sophie against a red background, then there could be a slight red cast on some of the hairs, um, certainly these flyaway hairs, and Photoshop would know that, and I can decontaminate those colors, so that's what I do. And it just basically takes that color out, or does its best to take that color out. And then lastly, output to, and you've, you've got various options, but I like to output to a new layer with a mask, and then I'll just simply click on OK, and there we are back in the image. So if I just do, that's what we've separated. And you can see it's missing bits here and I would need to go and paint them in. But that is a consideration you have to make. Does that look as, you know, does it look bad? Do I need to put those bits of hair in? And um, on your version that you're creating, maybe it doesn't look so bad. And indeed, looking at this, it doesn't look bad anyway, does it? But that's because of the, maybe with a different color in the white, for instance. Actually, it still doesn't look too bad, does it? But it just depends and you can play around with that. So the next thing for me to show you then is how to use the brushes. And, uh, and I'll paint in, so I won't do the whole image. I'll just show you how easy it is to paint in. Now, before I show you the brushes, I would just say that it's gonna be so much easier for you if you've got a tablet, something like a Wacom, Wacom, Wacom tablet with a pen because you're gonna be drawing hair in and uh, using pen pressure and adjusting the shape of the flow and stuff like that with a pen on a tablet is so much easier than using a mouse. So you can use a mouse, don't get me wrong, but it's much easier, honestly, with a pen. And you could be doing so many strokes and putting so much hair in that it just becomes a right pain if you're using a mouse. So if you want to get into this seriously and you, you think it's for you, then invest, if you haven't already done, in a decent tablet. To show you the effect of the brushes then, I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer. And I'm just going to put a nice white color in. And I'm only doing that so you can see how the brushes work. You don't need to create a layer when you're doing yours. So if I go across to the brushes and come up to the top menu here, and I've got my brushes here, look, PPCO hair brushes. And there they all are there. So let me first select the single hair and um, accept that and uh, I'm just gonna create a layer on top of there. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. And basically now I'm picking up my pen and I'm gonna start painting onto here. And you can see, look, hairs. If I paint harder, I'll get a harder edge to the hair. But imagine, you know, trying to do that with a mouse, I can create this lovely hair effect. That looks great, doesn't it? Let's see what other brushes I have then. So I've got close hair strands. Let's have a little look at that then. So I'm not 
not loving that one, so I wouldn't use that one. Let's have a look at the next one. Tight hair strands. Now that's more like it. Yeah, so tight hair strands. And so there's, there's, they're grouped together quite close there. So if I just zoom in a bit, you'll be able to see it a bit better. So that's multiple hair strands. And then we've got a hair curl. What's that one doing? Oh, right. Okay. Let's just come out of that for a second. So this is a something you might find useful. It's a big, long strand of hair. And if I just pop that down there, so that's something. So rather than it being a brush, it's just a big shape. So you can paint that big shape in wherever you think it may be useful. And then we've got this hairball as well. And that's the same sort of thing. So you wouldn't paint with that. That'd be silly. But you just kind of plop it down where you think you need it. And that you can see all those intricate pieces of hair can come in really useful. And of course, you can resize this. And with it being a brush, if I just do that again, so square bracket keys would make that brush size smaller. Or that shape smaller, I should say. So you can kind of position that where you think it needs to be. So that's pretty handy as well. So as you can see, we have a selection of hair brushes there. Um, and you will be able to access those. I, I guess the one I use mainly is this single hair brush because you can build up and build up and build up until you're happy with um, what you know the result. So let's get rid of these layers and uh, I will now paint on some real hair and you can see the effect. So let's just zoom in over here. Oh, another little thing, right? So if I, what I've done is I've opened, this is the image with, you know, the original image from the camera. What I like to do is I've got two images open. I've got the one that will, is currently being worked on, which I'm about to paint in the hair and this reference photograph, which is, as I say, just the original photograph. And I'm going to come up to window and I'm going to do tile all or range all, tile all. Uh, so now I've got both of these open and I can position that where I want it to be. On this one, I need to zoom in a bit, don't I? And what I can do is I can use this side as a reference and this side to paint in the bits that are missing so that you know I can refer to this image and make sure now it doesn't have to match perfectly but uh, it does help um, for you to get it right or you know to give you an idea where you can put stray hairs etc so I'm kind of now ready to start painting in some hair so I would select a brush and I think the one I'm gonna go with is um, tight hair strands I'm gonna go with so I'm going to get that brush, make sure I'm on the right version, <laughs> get that brush. Uh, now, the next thing to do is it's currently set to black. I need to press the Alt or Option key. And when I do that, it changes to the eyedropper and I can select a color. And I'm going to make sure you've got the color. Let's go back to the eyedropper tool first. I've got it set to all layers. That's what I need it set to. Anyway, back to the brush. And uh, as I say, I'm going to select the eyedropper by pressing the option or alt key and that sucks in that color then. And then I can start painting on some hairs. And to do that, I need to create a new layer. So this is going to be my hair layer. Let's call it hair. Okay, back over to the image. And now, as I say, make sure to suck that color up first. Uh, let's see the darker color maybe and then I can start paint, painting in this hair and that's how easy it is it's crazy that isn't it I was engaged to a hairdresser for many years so I like to think I've got a good idea about hair <laughs> and then I can change the color as well let's pick a lighter color so we can make it a bit more realistic and just keep doing that basically the darker color again and it's the combination of using different colors 
which will make it look real. Obviously, if you just use the same color all the way through, it won't. So yeah, okay, and then perhaps around there just needs a bit. And that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Um, I could do some work here as well. Get some of those curls going. And bit by bit, you start replacing. And again, just looking over here, I'm gonna change the brush now to um, a single strand of hair. Uh, I say this is the one I like to use the most really. And um, again, let's pick a color up, possibly this color. And I can do this type of thing, say, just add bits of hair in where I think it needs it. You can you can put some flyaway ones in, you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to match perfectly with, with um, the original, but you can use that as a reference. And I can come down here, put some more hair in there. You can even go over the original one I did with the multiple strand brush. And now if I do it on, on and off, you can see how realistic that looks. Now it didn't take that long to do really, did it? Now another thing we can try is to put in a different type of brush and we'll, we'll try the hairball brush. So to do that, I'm gonna create a new layer. Now make sure you create a new layer for this. And uh, I'm gonna come across, make sure I've got that brush selected, which I have. Uh, and I've gone for this one, hairball small, okay. And um, let's suck up the right color. So select the right color, um, maybe that color there. And um, I'm just gonna drop it just there. Now that looks awful, of course, because we need to do a few things. So first of all, it needs to go behind the image of Sophie. So now it's in the right area. And I can also press Command or Control T, and that allows me to rotate that. And I can have that wherever I want it to be. So maybe I want it there, and I can just accept that. And you always move that round and, you know, Maybe it looks good there, but I think just there looks fine, doesn't it? Now again, I would spend time and decide whether I want that there, but that was just to show you. If you go, maybe drag this to the other side and plop it there. And that looks rather good, doesn't it? That looks realistic, so that's with it off, that's with it on. So you can, uh, as I say, Put this wherever you think it needs to be, maybe there. Maybe you can do a few of them. So we've got that one there. And I could um, go back to the brush and pop another one in, say there. And um, the new thing is now that I've did it on the same layer, so the two of them will move together, but that's okay. And that looks rather good as well, doesn't it? So there's a couple of options then. So we had the multiple strands that we, we use the brush to paint in the multiple strands. We've got the single hairs that we can use as well. And we've also got this hairball. And the hairball does save a bit of time, I can't lie, because it might, you know, rather than sit there painting all those hairs in, it's, um, it's quite quick to just place them, isn't it? And make sure they're behind the actual image of your model. So, okay, now I would continue with that. And what I'll do is I'm going to go away and finish this and then I'll come back and I'll show you the results. Hi, I'm back an hour later. An hour later though with a cup of tea and just taking me time and that is now complete. So let's just take a look then without the hair strands and the hair balls. So that was with just with the selection and as I say with painting no extra hair in. Now, as I say, your version, whatever sort of photograph you're working on, you might not need to paint any hair in. But um, if you do, uh, hopefully those brushes will come in of some use. So let's switch the hair strands on and you can see the extra curls and stuff that I've painted in. And they look really convincing, don't they? And also the hair balls, let's switch the hair balls on. So the hair balls are just little stray hairs that are coming in here and there. So if I just isolate the hair strands uh, and switch this white background on, 
you'll see how much hair that I painted in. Uh, and then if I add the hair balls, it looks terrible, doesn't it? But you've got to remember all this is hidden, isn't it, behind your actual photograph of the model. Uh, and then if I switch that back on, that looks great, doesn't it? So without, again, without the hair balls and hair strands, it looks fairly convincing, but I can see bits of grey and things that aren't quite right. But that's, you know, I suppose that's because I took the photograph and, and I'm working on it. I would see more, I suppose. But with them back on, I mean, that looks really super convincing to me. And then I can switch the green background on. And that looks great. Now, I did promise you I'd show you some more things. I've just seen a little mistake there. There's some grey there. <laughs> but there's always more work to be done. Once you start using Photoshop, you, you'll um, you'll realise that. But I might tidy that up later. But I did say a couple of the, you know, I'd show you some of the other things that I did to this. So I added, let's see, in the background, I added some, um, another layer, which is just like all these little, let me just isolate that layer. It's just this. And it's got a blend mode, I think. It should do. And the blend mode is screen. So screen tends to lighten things. So I've got all these little lights in the background now, which look really good. Without, it still looks great, but it just gives it that bit of depth, doesn't it? Um, and then I added some bigger lights there. Now that is these ones. And again, that'll have a blend mode, I would imagine, which is also screen. And then the, I didn't like the fact that was yellow, so I put a black and white adjustment layer over the top of that. So it kind of looks like that. Now, I could take that out, I suppose. Um, took the wrong one, I think. I could take that out. It looks kind of nice like that, doesn't it? But anyway, let's leave it in for now. Then, moving up, I've done selective colour and I've masked out the eyes and I've changed the eye colour just to be a bit more, make it a bit more striking. Now, that's to taste. Uh, maybe the brown eyes were better, I don't know. But I'm going to leave them like that. Uh, then I've applied a colour lookup table just to give it a general sort of more of a glow. It's only subtle. The next one is to put some highlights in the hair. So I don't know if you can see that. That's off. I'm just about to switch it on now. And it's just lightened up in the little curls in Sophie's hair. And then I have added a texture over the top. Now the texture is, you can't see it because I've used um, a blend mode of soft light and I've taken it right down. It's only subtle, but it's given me that nice glow, which I really like. Um, now, once I get to that stage, I would make a flat version of that. So that on a Mac is Shift, Option, Command and E. And that is what you call a stamp layer. So I dare say on PC, it's going to be Shift, Alt, Control, E. And it, it gives you a stamp. So it's a flat layer containing all those adjustments. So it's completely flat now. And the final thing I'd do to that layer is turn it into a, you know, get it ready for smart filters. And then the filter I would apply is this camera raw filter. Camera raw filters are great. So there's our image. And then we've got all these for me to go through all. If you know Lightroom, you'll know about all of this stuff. But I'm just going to go straight to the effects tab and I'm going to add some grain into the shot. Now I need to zoom in a little bit, I think. Not that much. Zoom out a little bit. And we can see what that grain's doing. Too, do you want to put too much in? But I think about 30. We'll make back off a bit. Let's say 20. A grain of 20. And then we'll put a post crop vignette. Now I need to zoom out for that. That just puts a darker or lighter, depending on which way you go, sort of darkness around the outside. It, it, it draws your eye to the center. Now I'm going to switch the feather off so I can see the shape. Uh, and I, I want it a bit square, I think, or less of, less of a curve. And then I can reapply that feather. And maybe just back that off a little bit. It's only subtle, but it all makes the difference. And I'll just accept that. And that is the final image complete. You know, when you think it started from, from here, which is, you know, let's be honest, it's still a great photograph, 
but uh, the power of Photoshop, you can kind of do as much as you want. So let's go full screen and just zoom in a bit. And that looks wonderful, doesn't it? It looks convincing, the hair, all, all the little strands of hair that you can see. And some are real, some are painted in. But unless you tell someone, they'll never know, will you? So listen, I hope this video has helped you. And um, remember, with complicated backgrounds, it's a different technique. And um, I will shortly have a video produced to show you how you separate a model from a complicated background. This one, quite simple really. If you've got a plain background, it's easy. And don't forget to get yourself a tablet and a pen because it helps so much. It helps so much in, in actually um, skin retouching as well with dodging and burning. Okay, I will now hand you back to Frank. So there you have it then, it's simple, isn't it? So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do, put a little thumbs up along the bottom and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. But above all else, thanks so much for watching and you take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next upload. So bye for now and stay safe. Take a photograph and make the moment that stay.